Okay, so um, in yesterday's class, when we started graphing functions and transformations, we learned two different transformations. They were a vertical translation. That's when the graph moves up and down. And a horizontal translation, that's when the graph moves side to side. How can you tell that from an equation? Well, if you have something where it is f of x, the function plus a number on the outside, that is a vertical translation. And if you have something where it is a number inside of the bracket or with the x in the denominator of a rational function, that is a horizontal translation. Just remember, this is always opposite. So if it's positive, you actually move to the left. If it's negative, you move to the right. And when you put in your mapping coordinates, you always put the opposite. For this lesson, we are going to be learning all about reflections. So In the x-axis. Before we actually get into the math, I want to help you visualize this. So first of all, if you have a negative sign outside of the function, so um, a negative sign here, that tells me it is a vertical reflection in the x-axis. So what that means is a vertical reflection is kind of like you're going from top to bottom or bottom to top. So it's it's sort of like this. And if you if you consider what axis it's actually pivoting, it's actually pivoting your x axis. So if this is your x axis, your graph is basically going like this to this or this to this. That's why it's called a vertical reflection along the x axis. Anything vertical is only going to affect your y value. So the math for this is actually pretty straightforward. If you see a negative sign outside of your function, what that means for the mapping coordinate is you're just going to make the letter y a negative and all of your y values are just going to change their sign. So here I have another squiggly graph because I thought we were getting kind of bored of the same one before. So let's do what we did um, in yesterday's class. We're going to identify a couple of key features on this graph. This one, this one, maybe this one, this one, and this one. So negative 6, comma, 0, uh, negative 3, comma, 2, 0, comma, sorry, it should be negative 3, comma, negative 2. Zero, comma, negative 2. Uh, 3, comma, 6. And 6, comma, 2. And I can label this graph y is equal to f of x. Okay, so that's our graph, y is equal to f of x. And according to the question, they're asking us to graph y is equal to negative f of x. So again, I see a negative sign outside of the function. That means it's a vertical reflection and it's going to affect our y value. Sarah? Okay, yes, so that's, hold on, I'm just gonna uh, stop this here. Okay, so all we're gonna do for our mapping coordinates is we're just gonna make all of our Y values negative, which means all the signs are gonna change. So our X values will remain the same. That means we have a negative six, a negative three, a zero, a three, and a six. And then, if y is zero, negative zero is the same thing, so that doesn't matter. If you have y is equal to negative two, negative negative two becomes positive two. Again, negative two, this will become positive two. If you have y is equal to six, negative six will be, sorry, negative y is just negative six, and a two will become a negative two. The easiest way to think about it is all the signs change, but the numbers remain the same. Now, as we're graphing this, remember what we expect to happen. We're expecting the graph to flip over vertically along the x-axis. So you should sort of see that reflection once you're done graphing it.
make sure you have labeled your graph y is equal to negative f of x. And the way we're going to describe this transformation is vertical uh, reflection along the x-axis. Okay, so um, we are going to start by making the parent function for this. So remember, on the left hand side, I always write parent. And this is the square root graph. So I'm going to just pick my perfect squares 0, 1, 4, and 9, which is just paired with 0, 1, two and three. I'm gonna graph that. And I'm gonna label it f of x is equal to not sorry, just a regular root x. Okay, and then the question is asking us to graph f of x is equal to negative root x. So because there's a negative sign in the front, that means it's a vertical um, reflection along the x-axis. It affects my y values. So for the mapping coordinates, it's just going to be x comma negative y. All my x values will stay the same. And all my y values will just change their signs. And I'll graph that. I can clearly see my graph has like flipped over vertically. So describe the transformation. It would just be a vertical reflection. along the x-axis. Okay, I'll come back and show this to you guys again if you're like working at your own pace. I'm just gonna do all the answers. So we have them. Here is our parent function for the absolute value function. So for that, I pick negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And then I'm just going to use my ruler. This line is not very straight. I'm going to have to fix this one. Oh, actually, neither of them are very straight. That's okay. Okay, that's good enough. I'm going to label this f of x is equal to absolute value x. And then for this graph, again, you have a negative sign outside of the function. This means it's a vertical reflection. It's only going to affect your y value. And you're going to basically just change all of the um, signs of your y values. So your x's stay the same, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then this just becomes negative two, negative one, zero, negative one, and negative two. Sorry. And so when I graph this, it's going to look like this, which makes sense because the entire graph has been reflected on the x-axis. Oh, that's not bad. And this is going to be f of x is equal to negative absolute value x. And this is a vertical <laughs> reflection along 
the x axis. Can we pause here for a second? So again, this is our parent function, but for the rational function, we are not gonna graph. So don't graph. Values are used are negative two, negative one, negative a half, zero, a half, one, and two. And this is going to be negative a half, negative one, negative two, undefined, two, one, and a half. We're not going to graph that. Um, for this graph, again, there's a negative sign here. That means it is a vertical reflection. It's only going to affect my y value. And my asymptotes are not going to change because they're the only thing that changes the asymptotes are going to be a vertical or horizontal translation. So I'm just going to draw my asymptotes here. And here. Oh, I don't know why I did this first. I should have done the table of values, but that's okay. So horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero, and we have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to zero. Okay, and then it, for my numbers, everything stays the same. All the y values, the, the sign changes. So negative two, negative one, negative a half, zero, a half, one, and two. This will become positive a half. This will become positive one. This will become positive two. This is still undefined. Negative two, negative one, negative a half. All right, so when we graph this, negative two comma half is here, negative one, one, uh, negative a half comma, oh, I'm messing this up. Sorry, let's do that again. So negative two comma a half is here, negative one, one, and then negative a half, two. A half comma negative two, one comma negative one, two comma negative a half. So basically what's happened is each one of the curves has reflected vertically. What was once here is now here. Okay, label this. So it's f of x is equal to negative one over root x. And I can write this is a vertical reflection along the x axis. So we just went over vertical reflections. Now we have to talk about horizontal reflections. How does a horizontal reflection look like in the equation? Well, if you have a negative sign inside of your bracket, that uh, tells you that your reflection is going to be horizontal. So the way I think about it is, if you just take a look up here, oh, if I have my y-axis here, a horizontal reflection goes side to side. So basically your graph is gonna be moving from the left side to the right side or the right side to the left side. And it's gonna be along the Y axis. So the way we describe it is it's a horizontal reflection along the Y axis. And because it's inside of the bracket, anything inside of the bracket will affect your X value. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing, except your X is going to become a negative. Your Y's will stay the same. Okay, so I have the same random graph that I had before. Let's note down some of the key points. We have this one and this one and this one, this one and this one. So negative six comma zero, negative three comma negative two, zero comma negative two, three comma six, and six comma two. And I'm just gonna label this graph y is equal to f of x. And they're asking us to graph a graph that is f of negative x, which means in our mapping coordinates, our x value is now gonna be negative. So all we're gonna do is change all the signs of our x value. So a negative six becomes positive six, a negative three becomes positive three, zero remains zero, a positive three becomes negative three, and a positive six becomes negative six. 
your y values are unchanged. And remember, when we graph this, we should notice our graph is flipping from right to left. So it's kind of like this. So we have six comma zero, three comma negative two, zero comma negative two, negative three comma six, and negative six comma two. And I would label this graph y is equal to f of negative x. And I would describe this transformation as a horizontal reflection. Along the y axis. I'm going to do all of these ones just like before. I feel like after you get the hang of it, though, it is very repetitive and I feel it can get a little not boring, but not exciting either. So we're going to start off with our square root function. I'm going to graph that. And this graph is going to be f of x is equal to square root x. I look at my equation and I realize that I have a negative sign inside of the square root sign. That tells me it's a horizontal reflection and anything horizontal will always affect your x value. So it's going to be negative x comma y. Um, so it's going to be 0, negative 1, negative 4, negative 9, and then 0, 1, 2, and 3. And as we're graphing this, we're going to expect our graph to flip over from the right side to the left side. This is always a fun graph to graph, I find. And the way we would describe this is it is a horizontal reflection. along the y axis. Okay, I'll come back to this if you still need to see it, but I'm just gonna do all the solutions first. So here is our parent function for our absolute value sign. So we have negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. What am I doing? You guys, if you're on the absolute value part, that graph is interesting, right? Because it's so symmetrical along the y-axis, when you flip it, do you expect much to happen? No, it's actually going to be exactly the same. And that makes sense. Okay, so this graph is f of x is equal to absolute value x. You guys are so quiet, so now you're all just listening to me ramble. Okay, so the negative sign in, is inside, which means it's gonna affect your x value. So this will become positive two, positive one, zero, negative one, negative two. This will be two, one, zero, one, and two. And then when you graph this, you're going to notice um, it's the same thing. I wonder how I can show this effectively. I don't know, because I feel like it's just going to, you know what I'll do? I maybe will make it a little bit thinner so you can sort of see the, bolt, the original graph on top. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sorry. 
All right. That looks good because you guys can still see it. And then I will also write f of x is equal to negative um, axial value negative x. And this is a horizontal reflection along the y axis. All right, so we will come back to this. Last but not least, if you've already done the rational function, that one's interesting as well. All right, so our numbers are negative two, negative one, negative a half, zero, a half, one, and two. This is negative a half, negative one, negative two, undefined, two, one, and positive a half. All right. Negative sign inside. That means for our mapping coordinates, our y val our x value is going to be negative. Oh, I don't like that. And so we're basically going to change all of these to the different signs. So two, one, positive a half, zero, negative a half, negative one, negative two, and the y values stay the same. And remember, because there's no horizontal or vertical translation, your asymptotes will remain the same. They're gonna be the same as the original graph. So we're gonna have our vertical asymptote here at x is equal to zero. Just turn this around. And our horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero. And when we graph this, you're gonna notice it's actually the same as the previous graph. Okay, and then to describe it, it's going to be a horizontal reflection along the y axis. And the reason why this graph looks exactly the same as the previous graph that we had for the other reflection, because look at this. So if you have a negative, so you know how it was f of x is equal to negative outside. Well, that is the same as putting a negative inside. So both reflections are the same. Okay. And you guys at home, I'm just gonna show you the homework that I'm assigning. Uh, you don't have to do every question because I do feel like it's very, very repetitive and overkill. Oh no, here you go. So I'll just leave this on. You can take a picture of it. That's it. 